subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. We know that identical twins are formed from the same egg and have the same genetic material derived from their parents. They share all of their genomes and are always of the same sex. However, it turns out, according to a new study, that identical twins might in fact not be genetically completely identical at all. In this video, we'll discuss different kinds of twins and how researchers discovered that there could be genetic variation among identical twins. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. First, let's take a look at what the different kinds of twins are. We all know of the two of the most common kinds of twins. The first, of course, is identical twins who are formed when an egg and a sperm fertilize to form a zygote. And this fertilized egg splits into two and goes on to form two different zygotes. Identical twins are monozygotic. So there was one zygote that then split into two. And this splitting typically happens within 7 to 14 days of fertilization. The other kind of popular twins we're all familiar with are the dizygotic or non-identical twins. They are formed when two eggs from the mother are fused by two different sperm cells from a father and both attach to the uterus at the same time. So two eggs, two sperm cells, and two siblings who are born at the same time. When non-identical twins are brothers, they're called fraternal twins. When they are sisters, they're called sororal twins, like from sorority and fraternity. But the highest and most frequently occurring combination of twins is the non-identical male-female type of twin. There are also other things that can happen in the fertilization and gestation process which can result in other kinds of non-identical twins and other types of twinning. Sometimes in the same cycle for the same woman, one egg can be fertilized with the sperm of one individual while another can be fertilized with sperm from another individual. So in the same cycle and in the same pregnancy, Two of a woman's eggs could technically fertilize with sperm cells from two different individuals, leading to non-identical twins being born with different fathers. This phenomenon is very common among animals where the same, say, stray cat or dog can have a litter from multiple males. It is not very unusual in humans either. This is called heteropaternal superfecundation and the twins are called biparental twins. If you look at paternity suits and data from that, about 2.5% of dizygotic twin births have been biparental twins. There is also superfetation where a pregnant woman further gets pregnant again. She carries multiple fetuses but at different stages of development. Sometimes you can have mixed twins which are twins born to the same mother and father but because the mother and father belong to different races or have varying skin color the twins will have different skin color and body features as well and then there are semi-identical twins these are monozygotic as well and they occur when an unfertilized egg splits into two and both parts are then fertilized by two different sperm cells this leads to twins with the same set of genomes from the mother's side, but different sequences from the father's side as they were fertilized by two different sperm cells, but the same egg. Only two such cases have been identified in humans of semi-identical twins or sesquizygotic birth. Then there are mirror image twins where the fertilized zygote splits much later in the pregnancy, several weeks after the fertilized egg is supposed to split. This gives rise to mirror image twins, not a scientific term, but where twins exhibit mirror image characteristics such as if one is right-handed, the other is left-handed, or in some rare cases, a twin's entire organ system can be arranged in a mirror image to what is found naturally in the human bodies. There is no scientific way to determine if someone was a mirror image twin. It is theorized that it occurs because the fertilized egg splits much later in the pregnancy. And if this split delays further and occurs much later in the gestation period, twins could be born conjoined. There are many other interesting types of twins as well, many of which are results of complications during pregnancy. 
Many researchers think that up to one in eight pregnancies actually start out as multiples, as twins or triplets or more, but only one fetus ends up surviving. This is often called the vanishing twin syndrome, where ultrasound can sometimes reveal an extra fetus which fails to develop and then just disintegrates in the womb. Sometimes it can cause problems to the other surviving fetus and needs to be surgically removed. This fetus is called a parasitic fetus. Sometimes, in rare cases, two zygotes may actually fuse after fertilization, resulting in a chimera where genes come from more than just one pair of egg and sperm. In fact, there was a famous instance where a mother had given birth to triplets and a DNA test revealed that she was the mother to two babies, but not the third. It turned out that the mother herself was a chimera and the third triplet was conceived using the cells that the mother as a fetus absorbed in her womb of her parasitic twin. As our understanding and application of genomics evolves, so does the data we gather with it. Twin studies from the past many decades and in fact even centuries did not really include genomics and molecular biology to the scales that which recent studies have done. So from recent studies we tend to know a lot more. So with identical twins from this new study, it turns out that identical twin embryos actually pick up mutations in the womb as their own cell machinery creates new strands of DNA and cells divide into more and more cells. Sometimes some mutations in identical twins are carried by nearly all cells in one twin but is not at all found in the other one. The researchers also managed to find out that on average among identical twins about 5.2 mutations are different and occur during stages of early development and substantial variations of up to 10 or 15 mutations are present in about 15% of all identical twins. We know that for identical twins, the fertilized egg splits sometime between day 7 and day 15. We know that for identical twins, the fertilized egg splits sometime between day 7 and day 14 into two zygotes. But what we saw in the case of conjoined twins or mirror image twins was the split occurring later. The later the split occurs, the more cells the twins share. Conversely, the earlier it occurs, the fewer cells the two zygotes share between them. So researchers think that where there is variation in mutations between the twins, this zygote actually split much early on when only one group of cells got all the mutations and then continued to divide separately from the other twin. Alternately, they also offer another explanation, which is that the fertilized egg may have split unevenly and not in an equal or symmetric way. One half of the zygote may have gotten a group of cells that came from one parent carrying all the mutations and the other part of the zygote did not get these cells. Now these mutations are important and they do make a genetic difference, but they are likely inconsequential. In all likelihood, most mutations observed in the genomic differences between twins are likely to not have a major consequence, but very occasionally it is likely that one or two of them might play a role in a disease. How the study was conducted was very interesting and clever. Researchers studied many individuals which comprised of three generations of people. This included 381 pairs of identical twins two sets of monozygotic triplets, identical triplets, and their entire immediate families, including their parents, their spouses, and their children. The team sequenced the individual genomes of all of the individuals in the study. Once everyone's genomes are sequenced, you can track which mutation appears in which pair of twins and in which individual twin, and which mutations were passed down to their offspring. We know that there are two kinds of mutations, something which we also see when we discuss gene therapies or gene editing or designer babies. There are mutations that are described as somatic, 
that is they don't pass down to their offspring and somatic gene editing is useful for tackling diseases. Then there are other mutations called germline mutations which are the ones that pass down to future generations and likely appear in reproductive cells like eggs or sperm and other cells from the reproductive system. It is usually germline editing that raises a lot of ethical questions around gene editing. While somatic editing is holding a lot of promise for therapeutic purposes. So the authors in this study deduced that if a foundation was found in a twin's blood, as well as their offspring's blood, the mutation likely occurred during very early stages of developments when all of the cells were closely related. The conclusion of the study goes back to the nature versus nurture debate as it applies to diseases. The authors say that medical researchers and professionals should now stop assuming that identical twins have 100% identical genomes because now these mutated genes could also potentially play a role in disease development beyond environmental factors. The study was not comprehensive. For example, the authors didn't know which of these twins shared an amniotic sac or a placenta, which could influence findings and change their data. They also took DNA samples using cheek swabs and blood samples, but not really sampling from eggs or sperm or other reproductive cells. However, Despite these caveats, shortcomings, and despite the fact that genomic differences between identical twins are still very, very rare, future studies and especially studies with twins will help us learn more about genomic differences and the role they play when it comes to disease among humans.